Hi, welcome to the Sibling Rivalry channel. My name's Aaron, and today I'm going to be doing a Sculpey slash uh, polymer clay tutorial with you guys. And to keep you busy during your quarantine, we're going to make a little guardian gnome to guard your garden. <laughs> Welcome back from the intro. Uh, as you can see, I've got my cutting mat here. I've got a paintbrush. I've also, off the camera, I've got a pill bottle that I'm gonna just be using as kind of like a stand for doing a little detail work. Um, doing a bit of more of a close-up than usual here. I've also got some Tamiya lacquer paint, a paintbrush to apply that. I'm just using this flat, uh, whoop, there we go. This flat brush uh, that I got, I think this was just yeah, it's Artist Loft or whatever. It's the knockoff from, uh, or the store brand at Michael's, I should say. So, got this. You might just need to shake your uh, Tamiya stuff if it's been sitting for a little while. It's typically alcohol-based, but uh, it depends a lot of times on where it's made and, like, well, obviously it's all Tamiya, but I think you get what I mean. Like, it can vary in what its base is. Uh, we've also got a whole bunch of Sculpey, which you can see we've opened up and done all sorts of... It's already kind of mangled, pre-mangled, so to speak. Um, we've got a big thing of like the terracotta style stuff. Uh, we make all sorts of little projects here and there with it. I just... Val and I were making these tomtes earlier. If you're not familiar with what a tomte is, it's these little Scandinavian gnome guys. You see them a lot... Uh, recently around Christmas and holidays. Traditionally, Tomtes were guardians of the land. Um, in Scandinavian lore, a lot of times that would mean that they were protectors of gardens, protectors of crops, and they traditionally or originally were seen as being the souls uh, of the original owner or uh, person who worked the land originally, that when they passed away, their soul would transform into a tomte and they'd be a guardian of that field or that land indefinitely, so to speak. Uh, yeah, they actually kind of, if they look like Santa Claus, there's a reason for that. When Christianity took over in Scandinavia, they kind of uh, transitioned into being used as symbols for Saint Nicholas. And uh, yeah. That's kind of also where garden gnomes, the whole idea came from. So they're traditionally a Scandinavian thing and then sometimes Germanic and then they transitioned slowly more west and then we got more traditional garden gnomes. But these guys are just kind of simple, rudimentary symbol, so to speak. And uh, like if you're into the spiritualism, you can go all in on that. But we just like them aesthetically and uh, they're cute. In uh, certain literature, they're actually known as the Hidden Folk, which kind of guard the land and protect it against not just bad crops, but other things. So there's actually a fun game that kind of goes into that called uh, Puzzle Detective or something like that. I'll put a link. It's a, a game that I played. It's a puzzle game from Telltale Games, who's now gone under. And they have a whole thing of the, the hidden folk in it. It's weird. But yeah, let's get started. <laughs> so, as you can see here, this guy, who I believe, I'm told I named him Sven. I don't remember naming him Sven, but it must have just been the Tomte speaking through me. Um, he is brown body, black hat, black boots. Val has asked me to make a color opposite one, and as well as one that has little sculpted feet if I can try and do the little sculpted feet. So I'll set them off here just kind of as inspiration and let's get started. So I'm going to take some black Sculpey, just kind of break off a chunk. It seems like the right amount and we just work this until it gets nice and malleable. Now there is some mica glitter in some of this Sculpey. So if you're worried about getting glitter on your hands, 
maybe look for a Sculpey that doesn't have the mica in it. Um, I believe they've transitioned away from like the less earth friendly glitters and they're just using mica based and seaweed based glitters now, which is good. It's good to kind of keep that stuff in mind because microplastics are just nasty. If you're hearing any crackling noises in the background, it's just a uh, part coming off of my printer. It's just, I've got the ultra base style bed on the sidewinder. And as it cools, the part just slowly kind of crackles and pops off. Okay, so now we've got this nice and malleable, and we want something about the size of Sven here. So I start with the body and just kind of work off of that. And we just kind of want to build almost a little uh, egg shape, so to speak. Let's see if we got that in frame there. Yeah, just kind of like a little egg shape. I'm gonna see if I've got the right size. And this is kind of guesswork. I'll probably take a little longer than I normally would doing this just because I'm walking you guys through all the processes. A lot of this is internal stuff for me. I've been doing clay for a long time. We had uh, a art teacher in grade school that was really into uh there's that artist who does all of her books with uh plasticine and whatnot and our uh, arts teacher for uh prep time was uh really into that artist like to the point of obsession almost um i'm gonna take the stick here and just kind of form Val's telling me that the name of the artist is Barbara Reed. So you might have seen some of her books if you've uh, gone to school in the States or in Canada. I know she's she was pretty big in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Okay, there we go. We've got a nice little notch in there. We don't have to worry too much about having enough space for his head because realistically, like if you look at Sven here, the majority of him we don't actually build like the head or anything. It's just kind of, we build off of this body. So the hat kind of blends in and kind of becomes the head to an extent. Like realistically, the head is probably actually less than what I've got going here. But I'm just gonna press this onto the pot off to the side here. I've just got a little plant pot because we're doing this for plant pots. Excuse the uh, dried up soil in the bottom. This is a previously used pot. So just kind of make sure that he fit this body fits on there. And whoop, okay. It's a little tricky. I'm not used to being this up close with a camera, but uh, yeah, there, so that works. We'll set this off to the side a little bit. Um, I'm gonna start kneading some of the flesh tone here to make a little nose. I always like to go with the nose and the beard around the same time. Just keep a nice little balance to it. Um, if you find that you have too much, you can always just kind of pick a little bit away, just do like a little pinch, and then set it off to the side or remix the uh, pinch back into the main bulk. If you're not sure how to do a sphere or like an ovaloid or anything like that, you just kind of roll it between two flat surfaces with very little pressure and it'll just kind of form into a ball. And we're just gonna stick the nose on there. Kind of see Pyther here. Oh, we'll call him Pyther. And uh, yeah, just nose, just kind of round that over. We can always go and touch this up a little bit later with some of our tools. Um, I'm just using minimal tools here, not like really any heavy sculpting, sculpting stuff. And I'm just going to set the body to rest on the pot just so it keeps its shape. Next, I'm going to take some of this white. This is almost like a pearlescent white. You might be able to see the shimmer in there, depending on the lighting. And we're just going to kind of take this and try and work it into a beard shape. Now, if you look at Sven here, you can see that it kind of starts out wider at the top, narrower at the bottom. So we just do that. 
And the cool thing about this is this doesn't need to be very thick. We're actually gonna get a lot of dimension just by wrapping it and sticking it onto the body itself. So you do that. And the goal here is to work this as much as we can before we attach it to the body. That way we don't uh, deform the body or anything like that while we uh, are attaching it or while it's attached. You kind of have it as base, the base of it done as much as possible beforehand. If it's not smooth, don't worry about it. It'll sort itself out. There we go. We just stuck a little beard on him. It's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna go in with the edge of, like the non-working end of a, what's a toothbrush, paintbrush, and just kind of coax it away from the nose, just to kind of give the nose a little more pertness, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word. Definition, I guess. Yeah, that's what Val's saying is definition. That makes sense. And a nice little trick you can do to smooth this out if you're worried that that adds too much uh, dimension to the beard and you want it to be a little more subtle, you just take this, you set it down, and you just roll. Just even pressure, just very light, and just slowly work. If you're not comfortable with pressure, you just kind of go as light as you can, and you just work slowly. So, let's see, that's looking good. Kind of blend that into the face there. I'll add a little bit of texture to the edge of the beard, and it'll also help to keep the beard stuck to the body. Because if you don't stick the clays properly, they will actually just pop apart when you throw them in the oven. So, I'm just gonna go in and kind of give this a little bit of texture because every beard has texture. If your beard doesn't have texture, you got a plastic beard. Is a beard really a beard if it's plastic? That is the question. Okay, that's looking good. And the trick for kind of fusing is you wanna go rotate this way and just kind of rotate and blend the edges. We can always tidy up a little bit if we need to with an X-Acto or something or a scraper, but we just want to kind of fuse the edges so that everything's nice and consistent. Just kind of work the tool a little bit as you go. Okay, so he's got a bit of texture there. I'm actually gonna go and do the nose a little bit just to kind of work it in around the edges. And just slowly go around and if you have a finer tip, uh, like stylus or whatnot, you can obviously get in a little closer, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna smooth this out as much as I can. And you don't have to worry too much near the top of the nose because you're gonna have a hat covering most of that up there. So we're just gonna blend it. And I've actually put probably way more effort into this now than I did with uh, Sven here, but hopefully that will pay off. Excuse me. Yeah, Val's suggesting I give him a mustache, so I'm going to set him aside, let him kind of cool off, so to speak, because one of the tricks with polymer clays, especially like if you're doing anything similar to plasticine, or plasticine, um, you want to, the more heat it gets, the more malleable and soft, you want to kind of keep it as, well, ideally, if you want to be working this, you kind of want to balance between hot and cold. So I've just taken a little bit of the pearlescent white here, kind of rolling it into a tube. You just kind of squeeze it between your fingers and kind of work it into the shape that you want. I'll use the mat a little bit. 
Honestly, these mats are freaking great. I use them for like so many projects now. They're relatively heat resistant. I think that's almost thin enough. I'm just kind of work along the length of it. It'll stretch it out as you go. And yeah. Oop. Let's see, we got a little too close to the A. A little too thin. Um, but we can now take this, kind of build this up in the middle a little bit. You think like that, kind of? Okay. Just kind of like Work it in, yeah. Like so, probably, like that. Yeah, but like. Worked in a little better, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so let's kind of get that on there and kind of flatten it out because you do want your mustache to not stick out everywhere. And we can kind of work to get a little bit of a twist in there, a little swirl. Okay, let's see here, add some dimension to this. Make sure we're showing that on camera. Okay, there we go. There's that. Okay, let's kind of balance this out because ideally you want your mustache to be relatively centered. I think that's the whole goal with a mustache is kind of add symmetry to your face. So let's see if Val signs off on that and then obviously I'll texture it a bit with, uh, yeah, Val's like looks really happy about that. So I'm going to set him off to the side let him cool down a little bit. He's actually looking really cute. <laughs> oh, crack my joints, because I'm a sore, tired 27-year-old. <sighs> okay, so let's get out some terracotta and start working on the hat. So this is fresh from the brick, so like before, we're gonna have to work it a little bit to kind of get the uh, malleability that we want. And you just kind of knead it and fold it and all that jazz. And if you don't have polymer clay, uh, we'll probably post a another video where you can do some air dry clay. It won't work exactly the same, like it won't have the same uh, moldability potentially, but it should give you the ability to uh, make some stuff from scratch using some ingredients in your kitchen. So that'll be a video to keep an eye out for. We weren't really planning on doing any uh, clay stuff. But uh, yeah, hopefully this does well. It's something I actually enjoy a fair bit. I used to be like crazy about clay. Okay, I'm doing little feet here. They're just little beans almost, is how I describe them usually. And we'll just kind of stick them onto the bottom here. See if Val likes that for a little foot. Yeah, Val's nodding in agreement. So I've just kind of stuck that on there. I'm going to now work it into this little crease to kind of keep it adhered and try and work it into the uh, base so that he stays stuck. Okay, there we go. Make sure he stays stuckaroo. So 
so if you can't tell I'm just kind of working into the section there just kind of trying to let's see if we can get a good angle of that there just kind of smoothing it in again this doesn't need to be perfect here because it's going to be able to fit pretty much any pot does that still look good okay there we go let's make another bean for his other foot kind of approximate Val looks very happy with this. <laughs> She's like obsessed with uh, Scandinavian culture and Tom Tays. Around Christmas time, we've got about what, eight Tom Tays, I want to say? Twelve. I underestimate. We have twelve Tom Tays that uh, make an appearance, so to speak. Oh, I think I might need to add some more to his foot there because it's not quite balanced. He looks like he's got one big foot and one small foot. So let's just pop that off. Not a big deal if there's any clay left over. Just add a touch more. It's getting right to the point where it's starting to get really tacky. It starts to stick to your hands. Okay, let's see. That looks about right. Right? No. How's that? There. That looks good to me. Looks good to you, Val. Okay. Obviously, we'll have to work it into the body a little bit, like we did with the other guy. Other foot. Just kind of work it in. Now we actually saw some similar little guys on Etsy and we were looking at getting them and then we realized we had a whole bunch of uh, Sculpey and all this like polymer clay from other projects that we worked on, and we were like, oh, we could make these. Yeah, and we wanted something that kind of sits on a plant pot, which we've got like a little, uh, some of the like the little blind box stuff from Japan. Uh, we've gone to Sakoshi Mart and they had little dogs and they had hippos and Val's got a little hippo. If you remember the house hippo commercials from the 90s, like the 80s and 90s, uh, she's got a little house hippo that sits in sleeps in one of the plant pots and we thought Tom Tays would be perfect for this like they had little uh, female ones on oh excuse me on Etsy and yeah we just kind of thought why not make our own and try and see how it goes so I'm actually just using a brush here to just try and smooth everything and It will pick up some pigment, but it's a nice little delicate way of kind of smoothing stuff out. Um, I'm going to try going a little more aggressively when it comes down to his hat with this to see if I can get a felted sort of look to it. But right now I'm just kind of smoothing out the uh, finger lines. From working on it which I know is kind of counterintuitive because I'm literally holding it with my fingers as I'm trying to remove finger lines but there's certain spots you can kind of get and the brush adds a nice little uh, soft little delicate way of getting into these little creases without potentially ramming stuff into place there we go yeah, I think the the Tomtes are if I'm not mistaken actually one of the inspirations for the Smurfs the whole concept of like little little people in grass and whatnot. Okay, now we're gonna go back to the hat, which we're gonna do out of the terracotta style. And the whole thing with the hat is you kinda wanna make it domed so it kind of goes around his eyes more than anything else. 
So there's a few ways you can do that. You just kind of do what I just did and use a finger and just kind of mold around the finger. You can also, once you've done that, go in with a tool and just kind of widen the cap, make a brim, so to speak, essentially just making kind of like a cornucopia to an extent. You want to get a mostly uniform edge for the cap. And you'll just kind of shape it around the nose and the beard and everything to kind of make it look a little more apt. So now I'm just rolling it in my fingers to just kind of widen the tip because we want this to kind of go not to a point, but something similar. So I'd say we can just kind of stretch a little bit and work it and there we go. Does that look good to you? Maybe dull the uh, the tip a little bit so it doesn't look like a witch's cap so much. You could do this and make little witches if you wanted, if that's up your alley. So there we go. <laughs> that looks like she's going to cry. <laughs> um, okay. I'm perch him on here. Whoop. <laughs> Perch him on here a little bit so I can kind of go in without touching him too much and smooth out his hat. I kind of want to go in and shape it a little better. Get the brim down to a nice uniform little thing. go in and actually just raise the brim a little bit in certain spots to kind of bring this all uniform. It's not a big deal if uh, it's not perfect. Imperfections actually add to making it your own. I know that's a very uh, Bob Ross way of thinking, but I actually feel that way a lot of times. It adds story. And what can we bring to the world aside from our own stories? Aaron, 2020. <laughs> okay, so that looks good. Uh, so he's about done. I just want to go in and do you think I should add uh, more like hairs, kind of like what I did with Sven? Okay, and I'm going to try and brush the hat. Val's giving me a nod of approval to go in and add some more hairs here. I'm actually gonna try using the brush and see if that does anything that I want it to do. Just get rid of the finger lines. You can kind of see everything gets a little smoother as it goes on. I'll probably have to wash this brush pretty heavily with some soap to break off the, uh, the oils, but Let's see, yeah, we'll do that, that, smooth it out, wondering if I can stipple it a little bit to add some felted look to it, see if that actually works or just makes everything look gnarly. Since I'm building this to specification, I'll probably hand him off to Val and see if she likes that look or if I should just smooth it out. I trust your judgment. Yeah, I want your opinion, though. He looks adorable. You want me to smooth it or does the hat look good with that? The hat looks good. Um, the part of his mustache looks like it's coming out of a nostril. Yeah, I'm going to try and work that with the okay. exacto. If you didn't hear that, Val just said the uh, mustache looks like it's coming out of his nostril a little bit, which you can see right there. So I'm gonna try pushing this down a little bit, see if that fixes it. There, how's that? Good, but like his mustache is as thick as his nose. It just needs to be pushed in a little bit, I think. Okay. Well, it's like, you look at your mustache. Yeah, his mustache does have a lot of uh, depth well, to it. So what I'm doing is I've just got an X-Acto knife here and I'm just kind of marking the uh, the hair 
to kind of give it a texture thing. You don't have to worry too much about effect here. You don't want to press very hard. You just kind of want to barely touch it. And that will just kind of work to kind of give the impression of multiple hairs. And I'm just kind of going in to smooth this down a little bit, which will give it a little bit more texture. Once we go in with the knife, adds more to the mustache. Let's just check with Val, make sure I haven't mangled this beyond repair. I'm just going to touch that in a little bit there and there. How's that look for the mustache? Obviously the beard's going to... It looks adorable. Okay. <laughs> Aaron can do no wrong. The only feedback that I'm giving is it's adorable. Okay, we're going to go do this. It is easier. In hindsight, I should have done the, uh, the beard before I did the feet because now I've got the feet in the way of the beard, which makes it a little tricky to get some of the texture in there. But I'll go in. Yeah, so you can use what I've shown you here to do all sorts of different creatures and stuff. You could do more traditional gnomes if that's up your alley. Um, do animals, dragons. dragons, monsters, your own creations. Yeah, you can do pretty much anything. Um, video game characters are always kind of fun. I used to do that a lot when I was younger. Um, just to kind of, hmm, I'm wondering if I can do a little, no, that doesn't work right. I was trying to do a little shoelace thing almost there, but that just didn't turn out right. <laughs> little bootstraps. Yeah, this is the great thing about clay. You can fix your mistakes as you make them. And as you can see there, Let's rotate that around because I realize I've been probably working backwards to you guys. The camera's flipped, I think. Um, yeah, he's got some nice definition there. I'll go in, brush this a little bit more, kind of add a little more felted look. Just kind of stipple. And there we go. So there's Sven and his brother Pieter who just fell, but thankfully is uh, not really any worse for the wear. Just smooth out his backside because he's got a little bit of a ding or a thumb mark. So now we're gonna throw him in the oven for about 15 minutes for this size. This guy is just about the size of a thumb. Um, I say about 15 minutes per quarter inch cubed. Uh, at 275 Celsius right. Fahrenheit. Yeah, 275 Celsius would probably just like incinerate them. Um, and that wouldn't be any fun. So we're gonna set him in there and we'll come back after we've done that and uh, show you how he turned out. Welcome back from the oven. So, uh, he's actually been out of the oven a little bit. So we just kind of let him cool down before we started working on him some more. So he's back, you can see him nice up and close here. He's got a bit of glitter up in his biz. See his bum, or lack thereof. Like that. I could probably in the future make a bit of a flowy sort of cape thing to kind of look like he's like that. I know some tomtes are like that. Val is shaking her head uh, vehemently, or however you word that, um, against that concept. So. Yeah, well, I guess we're doing little uh, bean boys for the future, but yeah. Um, okay, so it's nice and hard now. Um, well, what we want to do now, because he's going to be exposed to humidity and whatnot in the apartment, and we want him to stay nice and sturdy, we're going to put a nice clear coat on him. So uh, like I mentioned in the intro, I've got this uh, lacquer paint from Tamiya. This is supposed to be a flat lacquer. You can see from uh, Sven here, it's not exactly matte, but it's less glossy than a lot of the alternatives. We got one of the Sculpey uh, 
lacquers and it just kind of looked really rough like it looked kind of glossy uh, like super gloss so we'll take uh, Peter here and we're going to paint Peter so I'll set him down and crack this open you might have to actually crack this open depending on how long it's been sitting and I've got my flat brush here I'm just gonna dip it in set this down and we're going to start painting. So, let's get a nice even coat on him. And there we go. This stuff dries pretty quick, so you do want to make sure you're working relatively fast. You can kind of go over it so it doesn't get too thick of a coat for the initial coat. Uh, if you want to do more than one coat, that is entirely up to you. I'm probably just going to stick to the one depending on how it turns out. I always just kind of play it by ear when it comes to this stuff. So let's brush just strokes pretty much every direction. Do the hat, see how it turns out. And as you might be able to see, things are starting to set a little bit. The uh, gloss kind of gets more of a tacky sort of look to it and feel as it starts to dry. See if we got enough just to finish up the hat. Uh, looks like we might have to go and get some more. Just do a little dip, a little bit more, way more than I needed. So we'll start doing the body as well. Not really the plan, but we're winging it. Doesn't hurt. You just want to keep brushing as it absorbs and dries so that it gets a nice sort of textured coat to it so it doesn't get too glossy because if it pools, it'll get super glossy. Okay, let's do his nose a little bit. Just kind of cover all of them. All of him, why not cover? all of him and because we're somewhat limited in how to hold him we are going to want to let him dry a little bit so that we can handle the head and whatnot so that we can do the bottom okay there we go And we'll let them dry a little bit. You can always blow on them if you want to kind of get a nicer, quicker dry. There we go, he's in focus now. So you can kind of see what I did with the beard there a little better. I actually really like how the beard turned out. Okay, the tip of the hat seems to be mostly dry, so I'm going to hold it very gingerly. And we're going to try and paint his feet with the lacquer. Probably get in his uh, little crease here. Just kind of do an even coat. get everywhere just kind of get everywhere so to speak just want to seal them as best as you can you could use a spray lacquer um, I just personally I like applying this stuff with a brush I find that you get a nicer more even sort of application I'm sure with a nice proper sprayer if I had like an airbrush or something I could probably get a better thing but I like kind of going with the brush it might just be a preference thing, to be honest. Um, maybe I'll get an airbrush in the future. Can't justify getting one in a one bedroom apartment. Because 
because you got to get a compressor, the airbrush, or you use propellant tanks, and that's just wasteful. There we go. It's looking pretty good. You see a little spot on the inside there. I'm just going to get that. There we go. All right. I'm going to say I think he is pretty much done. He's a little glossier than I'd like, but eh, still looks good. And you could always go over it with a little bit of sandpaper if you wanted to, or uh, you can just try stippling it. See if that gives a little bit more of a yeah, I guess that kind of works, stippling it with the brush. Oh, and he's starting to stick to my fingers a little bit up at the top because I'm holding it a little tighter. So I'll put a bit of gloss on there. And we'll just set him like this to dry. Whoop. Actually, I'm just going to set him on the pot to dry. There we go. And yeah. Welcome back. So, as you uh, know, we have finished painting Peter here. Or is that Peter? That's Peter. <laughs> I have two sons and I don't know which one's which. Um, in the off time, I also uh, made a little toadstool. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's something that you can do with your kids or with your parents or with your family members, friends, uh, while you're locked down on quarantine for the next few weeks. Um, we're going to have a tutorial on how to make your own uh, air dry clay um, that you can do out of just basic kitchen ingredients. So stay tuned for that and you could definitely kind of follow this tutorial and make something like this out of that air dry clay. You could even do this out of Play-Doh if that's something that you have. I know Play-Doh doesn't keep, like if you leave it out, it'll kind of crack up and crumble. You can actually glaze. Uh, Play-Doh and it'll actually stay not soft but like it'll stay without cracking for longer if it's something that you want to keep so just something to think about if you like the video please give us a thumbs up we really appreciate that uh, if you have any suggestions for future videos or any uh, comments on these let us know down below uh, really appreciate any feedback and if you're not subscribed we really appreciate your subscription we're going to have all sorts of new content uh, pretty much every week, every day, no, not every week for the next few days, every day for the next few weeks, we're going to have regular content updates. Uh, our regular schedule is Mondays and Thursdays, but we're just kind of making an exception to that. We're home. I'm sure a lot of you guys are home too, or home more often. So yeah, stay tuned, stay safe, and thanks for watching. Bye for now.